Welcome to my Wyoming office in DC. We have the bucking horse on the ceiling. There used to be a star there because this used to be Phil Graham at Texas's office. I got that removed and a bucking horse put up there. Over here, one of my favorite displays. This is my grandfather's fishing rod, my first fly fishing reel, and my dad's creel. And this was a special gift that my grandfather got from my grandmother, but I never saw her use it, only him. Mm -hmm. I told that to Diane, and she said, that's not the way our anniversary presents are going to work. <laughs> this is a painting on loan from the National Wildlife Museum in Jackson. It's an original Conrad Schwering. Uh, at one point, there was an anthrax problem uh, in the Hart building, and it shut down the entire building. Everybody had to stay out of there. They plugged all the vents. They put some special chemicals in there. It melted carpets, it melted shoes, it melted canvas. So I called the museum and I said, uh, how do I get this back to you? And they said, why do you want to send it back? I said, well, it's an original Conrad Schwerning. It's impossible to replace. And I don't want anything to happen to it. And they said, well, it's insured, isn't it? <laughs> I said, yes, so it's still hanging on the wall here. <laughs> I remember the statues on, on loan. Um, over here. None of these are the real thing. Well, except the advert, of course. There's a Mike Baker in uh, Dubois that does special carvings on moose antlers. And you take off the dark outer one and there's this white enamel inside. This is titled Bighorn Boulevard. So in Wyoming, most of our boulevards go uphill. This is a carved wooden fish. Did a nice job even with the teeth. I participated in the one-shot antelope hunt, and that was the bullet that I used to get my antelope. This is a, a one-of-a-kind sculpture that I won in the Kenai Fishing Tournament in Alaska. It's based on the number of lengths of fish that you get. If you release a fish, you get an extra 10% bonus. I released two that were 60 inches and a couple of other fish. One, one tournament. This is one of the fossil fish from uh, down by Kemmer, and that's on loan to me. But if you ever see a light background like that with the dark bones, it's from Wyoming. If it's a dark background with dark bones, it's probably from China. They has lead in it too. This is a hand braided rope that belonged to my grandpa and spurs that belonged to my grandpa. That, of course, is a jackalope that was given to me at the Boy Scouts at the Jamboree uh, four years ago. They were from Douglas and they didn't want to haul it home, I think. Well, these are some, a friend of mine in in Sheridan, Sam Mavrakis, who's one of the great sportsmen, one of the first sportsmen to actually make outdoor films, uh, taught me how to tie flies. And then after I got elected, he sent this to me and with a little note about how he taught me to tie flies. Actually, in fourth grade, I invented a fly that uh, really works well. I was trying to imitate a ginger quill. It didn't come out anything like a ginger quill, but it catches lots of fish. And I worked with a fellow on OSHA on safety, and he was intensely interested in it because his son had died in a green elevator uh, accident. And uh, I went fishing with him, and then he tied up these flies, which are Wyoming flies, and then these, which are Alabama redneck flies. But the really interesting part about this is these are tied with feathers from the last ducks that his son shot. So, a lot of sentimental value there. He helps grieving families now. Does a good job with it. I think they have some kind of an accident like that. These are old pictures. Got to get them updated now because I've got one more grandchild. And of course, the time that top one was taken with all of my kids and 
their spouses. Uh, we only had Trey, and that was when I got my Eagle Award and my God and Country Award. This is kind of a hundred year display of, of scouting celebration, including a picture from when I was a Cub Scout helping with the flag ceremony. And this is one of my favorites here. When uh, Sputnik put a satellite up, our Boy Scout troop changed to an explorer post and we did rockets. And uh, there's a movie called October Skies, which is about the rocket boys, um, written by Homer Hickam, who I've gotten to meet and judge some competitions on rockets. But uh, I loved it in, in, in his movie. He gets an electronic ignition on the eighth flight. We did ours on the second flight. Of course, uh, we also had the Federal Aeronautics Administration get a hold of us and say, you know, before you're shooting rockets up a mile or two, you really need to let us know so that we can warn planes in the area. Of course, in Wyoming, you can see for 30 miles, so we knew there were no planes around there. Um, <coughs> this is also from the uh, fossil area. That's a feather, which is a very unusual one. There have been two of them that have been found. I found the other one. It's got my name on it at the University of Wyoming. But that one got stolen and was retrieved, and we help with that program for saving fossils. Um, in the United States Senate, when, you, when you're here and your party is in the majority, uh, they need people to preside over the Senate. And so when you serve a hundred hours as the presiding officer, you get a golden gavel. And uh, I earned three of them in the first six years that I was here. In fact, for a long time, I had the record for getting in the most hours the quickest. And uh, one advantage of working on these golden gavels is when you're presiding, the parliamentarian sits just ahead of you. And when they do those interminable quorum calls, uh, you can be asking them questions. So I always kept lists of parliamentary questions that I wanted to ask. And uh, that was very helpful a number of times. I remember one time that Senator Byrd and Senator McCain were having this little fight on the floor because Senator McCain had an amendment he wanted to do, but he wanted to make a slight revision to it. And Senator Byrd wanted to debate it exactly the way that it was. So when we got a little break, I asked the parliamentarian, I said, was there a way that Senator McCain could have, could have done what he wanted to do? He said, oh yes. Hadn't been asked for the A's and A's yet, so all he had to do was say, I have the right to modify my amendment. And he could have modified it, and then Bird would have had to debate it that way. I said, well, why didn't you tell him? He said, we're not allowed to tell anybody anything. You have to ask, and we will give you the answers. So when I take a bill to the floor, I go right to the parliamentarian. I said, this is what I'm intending to do. Is there a better way to do it? Is that the way to do it? It's been a tremendous help. Um, I was actually the co-founder of the Air Force Caucus, and they did a special plaque for me. Helps a lot with uh, preserving more in Air Force Base. Uh, I'm a professional in human resources. Uh, there's a Society of Human Resource Managers, and uh, I think I'm the only one in the hill that has, has that. Now, you're supposed to have to renew that every, every two years, but they gave me special dispensation because the only changes since I got that would be laws that I helped to pass because the committee I'm on with health, education, labor, and pensions is the labor issues. Um, I got this from the city of Gillette because I did a big water project. That's how we were able to get to 30,000 people. You have to have water. And uh, so I then helped them get it paid off as well. And so they gave me that uh, this lays pipe, that kind of a machine. I do an inventors conference. And uh, there are a number of about 200 inventions that have come out of that. But this is one that I helped the guy preserve his patent on. and. Uh, What's unique about it is that instead of having one call for one type of uh, animal or bird, this particular one will call coyote, mountain lion, turkeys, bear, wolf, fox, bobcat, ducks, elk, and deer. 
And uh, so somebody wanted to steal the patent on that, duplicate it. This one just says coyote, mountain lion, bear, wolf, fox, and bobcat. But uh, we helped him preserve that. Um, try to emphasize the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. And, uh, so I have both those books for their 100th year anniversary. The center book is one of the ones that uh, I got to help write. There's a chapter in there that I did, and uh, everybody that did one of the chapters for Bill Sniffen, who's a, a great writer from Wyoming anyway, and came up with the idea of having Wyoming's seven natural wonders written about. Um, the other authors all have one of the traditional shots, you know, a headshot. If you look in there, you'll find that mine is of me in a stream with the trout. And I love the way the sun kind of comes through the clouds in, in that picture. Let's see, over here. <coughs> this is one of the first awards that I got. Um, I was visiting with the Austrian ambassador and happened to mention that uh, a number of Enzies live in Austria. And he mentioned that they were one of the few countries that didn't have an Austrian-American day. Well, I thought this was kind of an annual exercise maybe you did for the country. So I got a petition together and uh, got almost everybody to sign it. So it went through in a matter of days. And then I found out that it was permanent and a really big deal. And they flew people in from all over the world to celebrate this Austrian-American Day, which, of course, still exists. Uh, and they gave me that and said that it was only the second time that it had ever been given out and that I would be in all the Austrian history books as a result of it. Um, I served as the co-chair of the Sportsman's Caucus, and so been, this, is, this is out of a Montana cedar post uh, carving for it, but it was one of the awards that I got for doing that. Um, another thing that happens around here is you get coins when you visit military bases. And uh, there's a special ritual with it. You're giving it on a handshake, and you're supposed to carry it with you all the time because if you're ever on that base and they ask you if you've got it and you don't, you owe them all a drink. But uh, all of us in the Senate have multiple ones of those and decided to display them. So, let's see. This uh, stump that this display is on is kind of interesting. Look. If you look on the side, you'll see some bullet holes. I was in a restaurant in Cody, Wyoming, and the guy that was a trick shot is Bob Edgar, and he put that up on kind of a podium, and people could hold a postcard in front of it, and he would perforate it with his pistol, or they could put a playing card up there and he'd perforate that, or they could put a balloon up there and he'd pop it, or they could put a cigarette in their mouth and he would shorten it. <laughs> now, you might think of him just standing there and shooting a pistol. No, he shot over his shoulder using a mirror to do these things. But at any rate, uh, after I watched this demonstration, I did not participate. Um, I think you're crazy if you, you know, put something in your mouth and hope that somebody will hit it. But at any rate, I asked him what he did with the stumps, and he said, well, eventually it's got a whole lot of lead in it, so he burns the stump, collects the lead, and reuses it. I said, would it be possible for me to get one of those stumps? He said, what would you use it for? I said, well, I'd put it in my office and use it as an example of gun control. <laughs> my grandpa always taught me that gun control was hitting what you aim at. <laughs> you can see on the side where he used to go in and out on the easel. So, Coy, who's my press secretary, hates that story. <laughs> this flag on the front of the desk is a Wyoming flag. Um, in 1890, when we became a state, we became the 44th state, and uh, has an interesting arrangement of stars on it compared to any other, because you can't get, you know, the usual the usual arrangement of stars, you've got to pack a couple extras in there. So this went into effect in 1890, and it's the United States flag for six years, 
at which time they brought in some other states so they could get a little arrangement on the stars. Uh, Angus King, senator from Maine, inherited a desk from the 1860s that his aunt had had, great aunt had had. And when he was looking through the drawers, he found this flag wadded up in there. And he knew that it was a Wyoming flag, and he liked the way that I worked with people, so he framed that flag and gave it to me. That's how I came to have that. Yeah. Oh, can't leave this out. <clears throat> this is an umbrella stand, one of which used to be at each of the doors to this building. This was the first building built for office space. Before that, all the senators worked on the floor of the Senate. That was the only workspace that they had. Well, there might have been a couple of highways for some of the leaders. But uh, and the senators actually used to leave their coats hanging on this and put their umbrellas in the umbrella stand. When I was looking for furniture for my first office, I saw this and said, I would really like to have one of these. And he said, Yes, you and 99 other senators, you can't have one. Well, when they delivered the furniture from my office, they lost the couch. And I had a, an office manager working for me at the time that uh, had, um, had worked for Cliff Hansen for 12 years and then for Senator Simpson for 18 years. So she'd been here 30 years. They said that she not only knew everybody, she had dated everybody. <laughs> and. Uh, she said there was a way that they could make that up to me for losing the couch. And she knew them all. And she said, you could get up this particular piece. And they did. And of course, then they found my couch. And they said, now we need that piece back. And she said, not on your life. So I have had this unique piece since that time. Um, this is a cheap skin that's on going to from the wool growers. Um, these are some Indian artifacts from different tribes. and. Uh, this just happens to be a, a coat that I picked up that I thought was pretty, pretty Western. So that's the story of the chair. Well, this chair is unique too. This is a fold-up rocking chair, uh, a replica of what uh, Buffalo Bill Cody used to use when he auditioned for the troop that he had. And uh, the reason he had a chair like this is that it's a folding chair. Fold up the two sides. And you can throw it in the back of the wagon and take it to the next audition. But it's really very comfortable. I do some of my studying, I'm sure. 